2018 saw some big changes in Portland's real estate market as we transitioned out of a strong seller's market into something a little bit more neutral. So what does 2019 hold for the city? Well, we're gonna figure that out by looking at three indicators. Days on market, home inspections, and mortgage interest rates. Let's take a look. All right, to begin our forecast, let's take a look at our first indicator, and that is days on market. What does days on market mean? It means the total number of time, the total number of days from when a home is first listed to when it accepts an offer. Days on market. Now the average is an important indicator to pay attention to because it really tells are we in a seller's market or a buyer's market. And what is happening is we are transitioning out of a seller's market into a buyer's market. See, over the last couple of years, if a seller put a home on the market at a reasonable price, that thing was getting a multiple offers on the first weekend and an offer was being accepted in the first two, three, four days on market. Very much a seller's market. Let's take a look here at the last three years, 2016, 2017, 2018. You can see that through an average year, there is definitely a cycle of homes sitting around on the market longer in the winter months, January, November, December, January, February. But then as we get into the spring, summer months, May, June, July, homes are going a lot faster, not hanging around on the market as long. But one trend that we have seen changing over the last three years is that the average days on market is increasing. And this is something that we expect to see rolling into 2019, this trend continuing of homes sitting around on the market longer. You can see each year that average days on market has increased. So what does this mean for sellers? Number one, it means you need to adjust your expectations just a little bit. Still, Home prices are increasing and they're going to continue to increase a little bit over the year, but you can't get too aggressive with that home pricing. And when you put it on the market, you can't be disheartened when you haven't gotten an offer in the first two weeks. That's okay. The average days on market has increased. Now, sure, you can still put a house on for a steal of a deal. And if it's in a lower price bracket, it could absolutely go within the first week. But if it is a higher priced house, it's got to hang around a little bit longer. What does this mean for you buyers? It means that you have a little bit more time to shop around on the market and see what's out there. There is less of a sense of urgency in buyers, which is something that feeds greater days on market. And as we see the average days on market increase and stuff hangs around longer, buyers, once again, less than that sense of urgency kind of feeds on itself. So we can expect in 2019, it's gonna to continue to roll that average days on market increasing, making it a little bit easier for buyers out there. And frankly, we're getting close to uh, moving more to a neutral market, which is better for everybody. Second indicator, well actually, before we all move on to the second indicator, I wanted to show you one other thing here that is changing and it is affecting the days on market. And that is just the total homes for sale and the total homes sold. If you look over the last three years, 2016 up to 2018, November, 2018, the light green are all total number of homes sold in the Portland Metro area. And the dark green is the number that were listed for sale. Now there's always going to be more homes listed for sale than the ones uh, that get sold. Even in a really heavy seller's market, they can come close in some points, but there'll always be more. But what we're seeing all three years, the buyer's amount of homes sold stayed relatively the same, but each year we're getting a bit more inventory every year. And this is a trend that very well it could uh, continue on into 2019. And with more homes on the market, it gives buyers more options. It reduces a buyer's anxiety of we've got to get something or else we're going to miss out on it. That fear of missing out that's being removed and buyers have like just more healthy time to look around at their options and choices for you sellers though. That does mean that you're competing with more homes on the market and you have to really make sure you're putting out a great product out there and that it is priced right. That's where a realtor like myself comes in, help consult you on that. All right, let's look at our next indicator and that is home inspections. Why the heck am I talking about home inspections and how is this an indicator? Well, here's the deal. In the past with home inspections, or and this is how home inspections work most times, 
buyer is going to make an offer on a house, the seller accepts the offer, and now the buyer has a standard 10 business days to perform an inspection on the home. Hire a home inspector, they go take a look at it and provide them with a report. And then if there's some major problems found in the home, the buyer might request that the seller make those repairs prior to close or reduce the price to uh, compensate for those repairs and those unexpected problems with the house. When we were in a very solid seller's market and there was not a lot of inventory out there and buyers were just trying to get whatever they could, buyer didn't have a whole lot of negotiating power when it came to negotiating repairs found, uh, problems found with the home. A lot of times the buyer was stuck with taking it as is because the seller knew that, hey, if you pass on this home, I've got another offer right behind you that's willing to take it. And of course there are exceptions to that, some major repairs. Every buyer is going to request it. It was unknown to the seller prior to listing it. Sure, those things get negotiated out. But now, as we move more into a more balanced market and there's more options out there for buyers, buyers are going to start to get a little bit more picky with that uh, inspection report as they're able to and they have a little bit more power to negotiate with the seller on repairs. That is absolutely something that we're seeing and we're seeing sellers give in to those repairs a little bit more because they know that there are more choices out there for the buyers. One other thing that's changing along with that is this whole idea of pre-inspections. Haven't seen those for a number of years, but they are starting to make their way back in a hardcore buyer's market where there's loads of homes out there. They're sitting around for a long time, a lot of homes competing with one another. Buyers got options sellers to make their house more attractive would perform an inspection before listing the house on the market. That way they know what's wrong with it and if they found any problems they would correct it and then they could put that house on the market and say buyers I've already performed an inspection here's the report we have fixed all these problems it's a great house and it's a great selling point for a house to for a buyer to see that that inspection is already done. Now uh, as we move a little bit more into this uh, more balanced market Sellers starting to perform those pre-inspections and it's something that I'm recommending to certain sellers with their homes. Hey, why don't we get a pre-inspection, fix these problems, putting out a great product. And when you do so, you can justify a little bit higher price on that home because you know everything is tip top shape. Pre-inspections, making a comeback. And the third one, interest rates. Talking about the rate that you get when you take a loan from the bank and you get a home mortgage. Your mortgage interest rates. We all know that interest rates have been going up the last couple of years. They were rock bottom a couple of years ago, practically free money. And now they're hanging around somewhere. What I hear from lenders is somewhere between 4.8 to 2.5%, something like that based on your credit, of course. Um, what we do expect over the next couple of years, there is good possibility that those in interest rates could increase as much as a full percentage point by the end of 2019. That means for buyers, if these interest rates do go up, and they are going to go up to a certain degree, but if they go up, you are paying more to borrow that money. And that means that to try to buy the same amount of house, you're going to pay more per month. But if you want to keep your monthly mortgage payment, your monthly PITI the same, you can, you can only afford less house then. So your purchasing power is reduced. That affects the buyers. They can't buy as big of a house as they could before when the interest rate was less. And for sellers, that means that if you're putting a house out there on the market that's four, five, six hundred thousand dollars, the buyers that previously could afford that house last year no may not be able to this year because their purchasing power is reduced. So for buyers, that does create a little bit of sense of urgency that it would be, if you're looking for a home, better to buy now than later, knowing that interest rates are going to go up. And if you are a homeowner, especially if you've got a home that is a, a great starter home and is priced somewhere around $300,000, probably better to get that on the market now rather than later. Uh, get it on now where there's still more buyers able to purchase that home as first time home buyers financing a vast majority of that purchase price. So interest rates, something to pay attention to. If you want to learn more about interest rates, buyers, and how they affect your loan, check out some of my videos on my YouTube channel, youtuberealtor.com. I have some chats with some excellent lenders like Anthony Loaders right here with Prior Priority Home Mortgage. And we talk about mortgage rates, how do they affect your PITI, how do you know if you're getting a good rate, things like that. So check out all those videos, YouTube and Facebook, they're all there. Well, there you have it, everyone. 
I'm Alex Roy, Portland Realtor, looking forward to helping you make your 2019 real estate goals come true. Looking forward to chatting with you. Cheers. Don't wanna fake it, fake it. I try to wake it, wake it. While I make it, make it. I wanna this, I know.